Back in university, I was serving out my fellowship and I burned out. When I look back, it came down to my dependence on myself rather than relying on God. And I, I think at the end of the day, like as much as it sucked to really struggle and feel that, it gave me a really great understanding on what it's like to serve on your own strength and how ultimately it's futile. Coming back to present day, I am serving again back at church, uh, serving with youth and uh, serving in Sunday school. God has just made it abundantly clear what I still need to work on. This past week, I've definitely been saying a lot of yes to people, but saying no to my family, especially with you know serving, saying yes to a lot of requests like driving people home, helping out with uh, leading activities and, and, and lessons. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I was really choosing to prioritize that over my family. My sister was asking me to help with the dishes. And I was like, no, like I want to, you know, edit my videos. I have other things that I want to do. Yet when it comes to helping out at fellowship, I would easily say yes. And these are the same kind of issues that were arising back when I was serving at university, not prioritizing those that were closest to me. And I went to church today and I really was feeling a little bit tired, but I was like, here's an opportunity to just be present, enjoy God, all that stuff. And so the sermon was, was great. Talked about seeking God and Jeremiah 29, 11. It's good. It's just sometimes when you hear it over and over, you forget how it can actually apply to your life. And so I was listening, I was like, wow, you know, I actually haven't been trusting God, right? Like seek me and you shall find me. So I was like, all right, God, all right, let me trust you. As I was preparing for Sunday school, I asked my friend, like, hey, like, do you want to, can you help me with something? He's like, oh, no, like, I'm actually not serving. And in theory, like, that's totally fine. If you're not serving, you're not serving. That's healthy. That's like healthy boundaries. But for me, that like sent a shot of bitterness and resentment in me. And I was like, I'm still serving. I want to take the day off, but I'm not. And I guess because I've felt that feeling before when I was burned out at university, it was a very clear sign that I needed to take some time to really process that because it's nothing wrong on his end. It's how I was interpreting that. And then again, the next thing, my pastor came up to me and was like, hey, thank you for taking the time to serve and go out of the extra way to help the, help the kids and everything. And he said, it's a lot of work and we see your heart and we appreciate that. And, and I said like, oh, it's not a problem. It's not at all. But as I was saying that, like, I felt like so much more pain that was like coming out of me, like, Oh, like, no, it was a big deal. Like, I did have to spend an extra hour driving there and back. And, and it is frustrating because, like, I wanted to use that time to spend it the way I wanted to, right? And that was, like, another signal that I was like, oh, this is exactly how I felt when I was surfing back then, when I was burning out, because I would push away a lot of compliments, just push, like, try to push the spotlight not on me. Like, I'm fine. Like, don't worry about me. Let's help the next person. Instead of actually looking at where I was hurting and where I actually needed to take some time to rest and not rely on trying to just fix it by doing more. Finally, I was talking to a mentor of mine at church and he said, like, are you okay? Like, how's everything? And I was like, just a little tired. You know, I'm feeling challenged, but I feel like God is growing me. And he's like, dude, if you ever need to break, like, let us know. I don't know, it struck a chord because I was like, yeah, I do need help. Like, I do need to take time to rest. And I wasn't giving myself that. And most importantly, I was spreading myself so thin that I was giving the wrong allocation of time to the wrong people. Not because they didn't deserve any less, but because those that care about me most, like my family and even myself, I wasn't giving that same amount of energy or respect or time to them or me. It's so funny. I was like, God, like this sucks. Like, why do I feel like I'm just going to like break down? Like, I need to cry. Like, I'm so tired. I, I, I feel like I'm just doing it by myself. And worst case scenario, maybe I can share a testimony about this. But man, like clearly you're telling me like, they, I still got to work on this. I got to work harder on developing rest or whatever. But that's when it really hit me that this entire time I was so focused on trying to do it alone, trying to make, make snacks on my own, trying to pull the, the lessons together on my own, trying to drive, you know, support the kids on my own. But that's exactly why I burned out in the first place. After I realized like I wasn't even breathing properly, like my breath was shallow as I was thinking all these things. I was like, okay, let's take a deep breath. Like let's take a step back. 
After I did take that step back, I was able to be like, you know what? God is in control. And if he's in control, like, then I don't need to stress. If God is for me, who can be against me? Right? And all that, that anxiety and stress I was feeling, I just was like, God, <laughs> you know that I'm doing it by myself. Here, take it and let me rest in you. And just like that, I was able to really just think like, wow, it's such a blessing that I get to be here today at church to really serve and really just let God use me. It's not out of my own cup that I'm pouring out of, right? It's like Jesus has already done the work. So I don't have to, I don't have to try and strive on my own. And that really did a 180 in my mood and just really being present again. I guess all to say is that he was able to just like teach me again. You know, like I could have easily like burned out and gotten bitter and, and you know, tried to like continue to do things on my own. And that, that fiasco, my first time I encountered it, took a couple of months. Like I was in that mindset for, I was like in a year in that mindset. So cool how God was able to use that and be like, you know what, Ethan, here's just one day. Here's, sorry, here's just like one hour <laughs> of, of this conflict that you're feeling. But it's a great reminder to rely on me. And so I did, and it feels great. Like, it generally does feel great, like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I was gonna say something else, but I kind of forget. Oh yeah, and so we watched The Chosen. Oh, The Chosen was so good. I didn't really expect anything because I grew up watching like Veggie Tales and other Christian movies and they're okay. But genuinely watching The Chosen, we were watching the Christmas specials, really made you feel like what it felt like to be like a Jew and to feel like oppressed and not have any hope. They just really fleshed out the, the Christmas story. But I think one thing that stuck with me was the name Emmanuel. Because Emmanuel means God with us. God is, God is with us. That's a huge reminder, like, wow, like, you're right. God is with us. Like he came to dwell among man and now he dwells with us in the spirit, which, which is like a great reliever knowing that every day, whether I'm working or serving or resting, like God is with me right now and nothing can take me away from him. It truly is a blessing to know that instead of having to like pray at a temple or have to wait to, to talk to God, he's with me right now. And I have that hope, that hope that even though everything is painful or, you know, it is a struggle, right? But God uses that and he is continuing continuing to refine me and transform me into the man of God he's called me to be. I don't know, really know what I want to do with this today, with this talk. And I know it's kind of like dead, a little monotone. And honestly, it could be better. I'm sure like my storytelling will be refined as I continue to practice. But I think for me, the act of just sharing what God has placed on my heart and being able to share it with the world and also have like a memory for myself. It's great. I think for a while, like I would really resist a creative act like this. Like, oh, like I really want to share this. But what do other people think? Or what if this work that I have to do? I'm like, you know what? I feel like I want to share something. So I'm going to share. Removing those areas of friction to just unlock that creativity.